Good morning, church family. Welcome to St. Matthew United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you are with us today. Today is going to be a great day. At St. Matthew, we are a Christ-centered family of grace where all are wanted. We are committed to becoming who Christ says we are, growing, living, and sharing God's love one relationship at a time. I am so happy that you guys are joining us today. So let's sing God's praises together. That's really good stuff, praise Van. <laughs> I like that song, Through the Sun Set Free. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. We have our announcements today. Uh, remember our St. Matthew YouTube channel. Uh, it's on YouTube, or you can Google search SMUMC Lubbock uh, YouTube and go to our channel. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of video that's posted up there. We've even got some children's stuff that's up there now, so go and take a look at that. Also, continue to stay in touch with one another and reach out and keep up with email uh, in prayer and in request. I can't stress just how important this is that we continue to stay connected as the loving family and body of Christ uh, that we are. Also, prayer warriors continue uh, to pray together remotely on Mondays and Thursday mornings. So, prayer warriors, thank you so much for continuing on in lifting needs and praises and thanksgiving uh, up to God during this time. Uh, you don't have to formally be a part of that group. If you want to join them in prayer uh, during that time or on those hours, then by all means, uh, please do that. Or pray other days too. We are always in need and always so grateful and thankful for the prayer that we have. Also, 
If you want to run a Zoom party, <laughs> and we're getting pretty good at Zooming around here, if you want to run a Zoom party, then I just want to encourage you to contact me or contact Pam, and we will set it up for you. It doesn't even have to be about church business. If you just want to hang with some people from your Sunday school class or you want to get together uh, with a men's group or a women's group, uh, any of those things are completely, completely welcome here. So just let us know, and we'll set those up and get that organized for you. Also, tomorrow night, this is completely awesome, Transform Hers is meeting again. They've moved to twice a month, and their Bible study is over um, uh, mental health. Mental health, right? Yeah. Is that not right? Close enough? <laughs> Tell me what it's about. Relationships. So I, I think I probably had, had put that wrong in my announcement, so I'm very, very sorry. But listen, it's a great, great time. And I just really want to encourage you to invite uh, your friends to come. Forward uh, the link that I sent to you in email to anybody and everybody that is a female, and they are all welcome there. So that is tomorrow night uh, at, uh, I think, 7 p.m. Is that correct? 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Okay. And then Brown Bags and Bibles, Wednesdays, noon to 1 uh, that's uh, where we are just looking at the Word of God. We've had a lot of great guest speakers from Lou Giglio to Max Licato. They've all just stopped by to speak. Not kid, not really, just kidding. But it's a really good time for us at that lunch hour. So if you're looking for something to do and you want to learn more about what God is saying and, and you want to get the view of the room of, of people and how God is impacting their life, then I really, really want to encourage you guys uh, to join us from noon to one. Sermonforkids.com, I want to remind you of that. Uh, parents, take your kids up there, look around. They've got lots of great uh, children's material uh, that's impactful for the kingdom of God. It's good teaching stuff, and also it's fun. So go to sermonforkids.com to see that. Also, the How Fortunate You Are campaign, if you still have a donation that you have not given, uh, please send it to the church by the end uh, of this week, and uh, Paula will be sure and get that zipped up. Paul and Jenny will get that zipped up and on to, uh, and on to Rick's ministry there as well. Uh, the St. Matthew Swap Shop is completely and fully open and ready to swap, so if you can't find a product that you want or something that you need, uh, let us know by emailing Jeannie here or calling the church office, and we will uh, get your items that you're seeking and searching out in front of the church body, uh, and maybe you can swap something really cool with somebody. <laughs> that would be awesome. Also, the drive-by loving for Hugh Forbes was absolutely awesome. For all of you that prayed for this, thank you very much. For all of you that participated and came and drove by for the praise and worship team that was there, uh, that sang uh, the good, good hymns uh, for Hugh. Uh, that was wonderful. I've talked to Hugh since then. He had a really, really good time. It was very, very touching for him. So thank you uh, for putting God's love into motion uh, as we did that for Hugh. Uh, and continue to be in prayer for him and everybody else that is shut in during this time uh, because you know, they're really missing interaction. They're really missing community like all of us. So thank you very much for those that came and prayed for that as well. Uh, our ongoing ministries to be in prayer for are our first responders and also for Aspen Village. So I would just ask that this week that you do just take some special time just to get quiet before the Lord and to lift, lift those guys uh, up to you, up, up, to, up to him uh, as we continue to think and, and, and think about and support and continue to uh, love on our first responders and the people that are just right across the street from us in our own community, in our own backyard at Aspen Village. Be in prayer for them. Applos, you can still give online. You can write a check to the church, and you can mail it in. You can drop it off. You can call uh, Jenny or send an email to her, and one of us will come pick it up, or you can give online at this URL. This is also listed on our website, which actually, if you haven't been to our church website in a while, I want to encourage you to go up there and look at it. We are redoing the website, and it's also on our Facebook page. So just go to applos.com, this URL here, and it's really super simple and easy uh, just to click and give 
uh, online. And thank you very much for helping this ministry continue uh, during this really odd and unusual time. Birthday wishes and prayers. Marlene Pierce, May 16th. Happy birthday, Marlene. Woo-woo. And Wendy Holiday, May 23rd. Happy birthday, Wendy. Way to go. And we're just going to sing happy birthday with everybody that's in here right now, okay, to Marlene and Wendy, okay? Really good. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday, dear Marlene and Wendy. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Y'all give them a hand. We are just blessed with both of those ladies in our church. That's awesome. Happy birthday, guys. And that's all of our announcements. Uh, let me open us up in a prayer. Father God, we lift this time up to you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you so much for your love and for your uh, never-ending commitment, and you're always keeping your promises to us, Lord. Uh, Jesus, we ask that today that you would change us, God. Make us more like you, little by little, God, in every way, just like the children's song says, little by little in every day, you're changing me. So, Lord, uh, Father, we thank you so much for that. We pray the power of your Holy Spirit would be upon us right now and all that are viewing, all that are listening, all that are watching, Lord, that you would turn our living rooms into living sanctuaries for you, that you would turn, uh, if we're at our office right now or if we're on our phone, in our car, all of those places, God, make holy ground right now, Lord. Come in to our lives, Father. Touch us, reach us, Lord. Help us to be obedient and fall more love in you, more love uh, with you, fall more love with, more in love with you each and every day, God. We love you and we need you and we lift these praises up to you, God. It's in your name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is number 348, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling. Thank you. 
you please join me in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of inspiration this morning is number 347, Spirit Song. Amen. Thank you, Carol. As we come to our prayer time today, uh, just let's just take a moment and let's just sit together quietly in the presence of God, uh, and let's just meditate on His goodness and things that we are thankful for uh, in our lives. So, will you join me as we do that together? Father, we adore you, God. We are so enamored with your greatness and your glory. Father, it is beyond description. It's beyond anything that we have ever seen or could compare to in this world, Father. And Father, it's in that adoration that we come and we confess, Lord, that we don't always do it right, Father. We confess that some days are, are better and other days are worse and as we walk with you uh, in this life, God. Lord, we confess that we are not always the nicest people (laughs) to each other. Uh, We are not always uh, completely and totally focused on you, Father. Lord, we confess even, Lord, that there are are just uh, 
times that we are short on faith or we are short on hope or we are uh, uh, short on uh, love, God. We are short on patience, Father. But it's even in all those things, God, that you continue to come back to us, God, and you continue to love us and you continue to work in us and on us and through us. Lord, you are not going to stop until we are perfect, God. And, Lord, it's in that confession that we have thanksgiving because, Lord, thank you that you didn't stop and you didn't give up and you didn't quit and you, and you didn't get impatient and you didn't just stay, let's just toss it and start over. Thank you for what your son did for us on the cross. Thank you that he has made us right in your sight, Lord. Father, thank you for the people that you bless us with every day in our lives, Lord. Father, thank you for the, the reminders of your, uh, of your being king of us, that it, whether it be in the beautiful weather or in the rain or in the, the breeze uh, rustling through the leaves, these constant reminders all around us, Lord, that, um, that you have us. Thank you, God, that you are with us. Thank you, God, that, that you'll be with us, Lord, that you are the same uh, tomorrow as you were yesterday in faithfulness and promise to us, God. And it's out of that thanksgiving, God, that we, we do come to pray for needs, Lord. Father, we pray for the, the families that are directly touched by this virus, God. We pray for those that have lost loved ones, Lord. We pray for those that are, that are sick, God. We pray for those that are in the hospital uh, right now, Lord. We pray for those that, that we can't go see, that, that we can't hug, that we can't touch. Lord, we, we pray that, that you take your big daddy arms and you just you put them around them. You, you send the right nurses and the right doctors and the, right, the people that believe and love you that they can love on, on these that are not uh, here with us, uh, that are in the hospital right now. Lord, uh, we pray for the needs of our hearts as well, whether it be worry over children or whether it be worry over finances, God, or whether it be worry over, over loved ones that are uh, out in the community, Lord. We pray for ourselves, God. And, Lord, we know that um, just like uh, your eyes on the sparrow, uh, the little bitty things that, you would think maybe wouldn't be so important to you are super important to you, God. The things inside of us, the ways that we feel, our emotions, Lord, uh, our want, our needs, where we feel that we're short, God, all of that you care about, Lord. So thank you that you're such a loving and kind God, and it's in this thanking you that you're such a loving and kind God that we can come to pray as you taught your disciples to pray by saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and give us this day god our daily bread as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever father Amen. Amen. As we talk about our giving today, I just want to, again, just tell you, thank you so much uh, for the way that you are giving and for helping uh, support uh, the ministry here uh, as well. I mean, you have been absolutely incredible and phenomenal all the way through this. And so uh, we just really just pray that God bless the money that is given, that it will be translated into uh, a relationship, a, a community, a family uh, uh, with him. And we were going we're gonna to talk today about in our giving that we are doing the gifts of the Spirit and what we can give. And today what we're going to talk about uh, is patience. And so I pray that today would be a great day of patience, that you would give that I would give, that we would all give the gift 
of patience that God has so lavished upon us. And so in our families this afternoon, uh, with our with co-workers this week, with those that uh, we have relationships with, and even <laughs> with those that we don't know while we're driving around, I pray that God's patience would be upon you in such a way that it would overflow out of you and that that would be your gift to your family and to your community uh, and to those that you love today. So let's just pray and ask for God's blessings upon our tithe and also upon this gift of patience that we'll extend to each other. Father, we do thank you so much for everything that you have done for us, God. And Lord, thank you so much that, you know, in this world, you know, it requires money, God, you know. Uh, Lord, but you made it. It's yours anyway. So, Lord, let us give lavishly. And, Father, also bless every single penny that it would go towards the furthering of your kingdom, towards helping and towards loving and towards supporting and showing uh, this world and our community just how wonderful and great and loving that you are, Father. Lord, they'll know that we are Christians by that. They'll, they'll recognize you by that, by our love that you have given us, God. So turn all of this money into love, Lord. And Father, we also pray and thank you for the gift of patience. And now may we just pour that out on each other, Lord. May we pour that out on each other as we run errands. May we pour that out on each other as we wait at the drive through God, to get the hamburger, Lord. May, may we pour that out on each other as we... Uh, enter relationships in our bedrooms and in our kitchens and, and, and in our dens and in our living rooms and in our front yard, in our neighborhood, in our community, Father. May this be the week of patience, God, for us. Thank you for giving gifts that we just don't get for ourselves, but they're gifts that we can give to other people. So, Lord, we pray all this in your name. Amen, God. Amen. Well, um, we uh, today, I, I just want to uh, just look at the scripture real quick, and it's Romans 8, 5 through 8. That's what we're going to look at this morning, so uh, let me just read that and grab your Bibles, because I do want you to kind of follow along today. It says in the NIV, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. May God add his mercies and blessings upon the reading of his word today. So, uh, we are doing a study of Romans chapter 8, and, uh, and we're walking step by step through that. And so do you guys remember uh, this old prayer that circulated through email many, many years ago? Uh, the prayer read, uh, Lord, I've done pretty well today. I've not said a bad word. I've not spoken harshly to my wife. I haven't lost my temper with my employees. I've not looked at any woman in the wrong way. Uh, but Lord, I'm about to get out of bed, so if you could help me with the rest of the day, I really would appreciate it. I mean, that's how we feel sometimes, isn't it? I mean, do you ever uh, start the day just determined to do the right thing, uh, but then you feel so powerless uh, to do it? Uh, I'm going to be more patient. We're talking about patience, you know, in our offering time. I'm going to be more patient today. I'm not going to gossip uh, today. I will not complain today. I I'm going to have more self-control uh, today. Uh, then before lunchtime, <laughs> you've already failed, right? And, and then you wonder, well, why did I even try in the first place? And then that just takes you down to the rabbit hole to getting frustrated and, and you know, maybe wanting to give up. I've had many days like that, and I just want to tell you guys, it is really hard to live by the Spirit when the flesh is just so tempting, you know. Um, we're in a series where we're walking verse by verse through the eighth chapter 
of the book of Romans. And it's, man, it's just so power-packed. And it covers the central themes of life. And that book, uh, that chapter of Romans uh, touches on so much of Christianity. And, and Paul writes about a series of these compelling forces that are battling against each other. You know, last week we looked at guilt uh, versus uh, grace. This week, the Apostle Paul, I mean, he's going to be really teaching us about two other options in response to Romans chapter 8. And those are being that, you know, you can live in the Spirit or you can die in the flesh. And that's really the choice that we have. Now look, guys. Life isn't easy once we belong to Jesus Christ. I mean, in fact, in some ways, it actually gets harder. And I just want to confess to you this morning that I've not always put that out there when sharing about Jesus. I've only sometimes told about the healings or the miracles or the abundance, all the while soft-peddling obedience and discipleship and giving and sacrifice and mission and I just want you to know I'm very sorry about that and and I pray that God forgive me for the times that I've tried to talk someone into following him with only the message of everything gets really good and you know everything's going to just work out and it's going to be sunshiny days if you give your life to Christ right now from here all the way to eternity no more problems right yeah, that's not right you know it's not always easy but also it's better than anything that I could ever describe or put into words falling in love with God it cost us as Christians to follow Jesus and you know what it can really be very challenging at times it's simple but it's not easy it's rewarding but that's not often immediate I like the way that Dietrich Bonhoeffer said it in his book the cost of discipleship and if you've never read that book before I just really want to encourage you to read it it's not a long read it's an easy read but it's just packed full of mission and calling for God he said this this cross is laid on every Christian he said the first Christian suffering which every man must experience is the call to abandon the attachments of this world now check this out it is that dying of the old man which is the result of his encounter with Christ. As we, <clears throat> excuse me, as we embark upon discipleship, we surrender ourselves to Christ in union with his death. We give over our lives to death. It sounds like Romans 7 and Romans 8, right? Thus it begins. The cross is not the terrible end to an otherwise God-fearing and happy life, but it meets us at the beginning, at the beginning of our communion with Christ. When Christ calls a man, and I love this part, he says, he bids him come and die. Come and die to die to ourselves, and, and I just really think that's what makes it all so difficult. I mean, as Christians, and I'm talking as Christians, even we live in these fleshly bodies chasing after uh, the pleasures of this world. God's people, right, struggling against the desires of the flesh. And now, look, we, we, know, we know it's a problem. I mean, we even hear people judge and we're in a hypocrisy and 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 we know that you know maybe I shouldn't have said that maybe I shouldn't have done that we we know that we have 
these issues, even as believers. We struggle with gossip, and we struggle with hate, and we struggle with bad attitudes, and we struggle with addiction and gluttony and low self-esteem. We struggle with resentment, and we struggle with materialism, and we struggle with pride. We struggle with (laughs) selfish ambition, dishonesty. We struggle with wrong thinking or bad thinking. And I just want you to know, if you are a Christian and you are here with us today and you are struggling in lining up with Christ's ways, I get it. And, and let me tell you, welcome. <laughs> welcome to your family here. You are among friends and God has great, great news for you. Because when we live in the Spirit, we experience incredible power. When we live in the experience in the in the spirit, we experience incredible freedom. And we will do things and can live life in such a way that we could never do or live on our own without his help and his strength. That power, his spirit, is ready is willing and is available for all of us here right now. So let's go. Turning your Bibles to Romans chapter 8, and I want you to follow along with me as we step our way through verses 5 through 8 this morning. Now, let me tell you something about my dad. My dad coached me in every sport beginning with baseball when I was 5 years old. And his famous line that he started with every season, every year, with every team was this. He would ask the entire team what they would need to do to lose. (laughs) And so we would all answer him with all these things. And then he would say, okay, (laughs) do the opposite of that. He would then look us all in the eye and say, if you don't know what right looks like and you don't know what wrong looks like, how can you ever do the right thing? And see, Paul takes the same approach here in this section of Scripture by showing us what living by the Spirit and not living by the Spirit looks like. So the first thing that he shows us Uh, when we are living by the Spirit, is that he says that your mindset changes. When you become a cross follower, your mindset changes. Look in your Bibles at verses 5 and 6. It says this, Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Now, one of the key phrases here that I want to look at is the part where it says, where it is set on what the flesh desires. Now, this is powerful, this statement. It is talking about what preoccupies our mind, what captivates our thinking. So if I were to ask you, what do you think about most of the day, or what are some of the thoughts that pop into your mind most often? What would you say? You see, the mind is very, very powerful, and so we must choose wisely what goes in there, but not just what goes in there. Guess what else? We have to choose wisely what we keep in there. You know, in the computer world, you've heard it before, that term garbage in, garbage out, and we know that that's true, and now, you know, we understand what that means, but the same is true with what we put into our minds. Throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, we are repeatedly warned and cautioned about what we are to dwell on and what we are to think about. Solomon said it well. He said this, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And then Paul goes on in Colossians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, and he says, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ and God. So... I mean, things above, not earthly things. I mean, if I spend too much time alone with myself in here, 
It can get pretty crazy pretty quick, and, and that can get so confusing. And, and listen, we can even manipulate ourselves into justifying some pretty wild stuff sometimes. So sometimes we just need a place to take our thoughts and get them checked out, right? Like testing a battery, something to tell us, is it good or is it bad, you know? It's like going through your refrigerator when you're throwing away old leftovers. Now, some items you can just toss, like vegetables, right? I mean, yeah, go and get rid of the vegetables, right? You don't really care. But on the items that you really love to eat or drink and you're not sure are still good, you may vet them a little more seriously. You know, you might give it a test, or if you like me, you'll probably give it a couple of tests. The first test that I would give it is the smell test, right? I mean, typically, that's good enough. If it smells bad, then off to the trash it goes. But, you know, there are some that are like me who consider expiration dates more as mild suggestions. <laughs> and so when it comes to an item that, you know, you love and that your tummy is super into and wants, you don't want to believe it's bad just by that one test of smell, right? So maybe you give it an extra test, the taste test, right? And then if it fails both, then off to the trash it goes. And it's kind of the same way with our thoughts. Sometimes we need a test for our thoughts to see if we keep them or throw them out. So you say, <laughs> I struggle with my thought life in different areas, Todd. Well, let me just encourage you. Think about running those thoughts squarely into Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 to get them checked out. Here's what that says. It's a beautiful s scripture. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And I just want to tell you, if the thoughts you're having aren't those, <laughs> right, throw them out. Well, I know that's hard. And, you know, you'll say, Todd, you, you don't understand. I mean, you have no clue the way my family talks. Or you don't know the types of things that my friends watch. I can't keep these things from popping into my head. Okay, fair enough. Go to the second test then. Remember the words that Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 where he says, take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now this is what's amazing about this verse. Here, Christ is giving you back choice in your thought life. Many of us have lived so long and have lost the power of choice in our thought life. But right here in this scripture, he gives it back to us by telling us, capture the thought and submit it to me. And I will help you know what to do with it. I will tell you what to do with it. I will guide you in what to do with it. I will help you deal with it. I will give you so many solutions other than just live with it, other than just give in to it, other than just do it, that you will find hope and freedom in the same breath. To have this, though, he says, you got to do what I say. You have to be obedient to me. And remember, this makes lots of sense because though we may struggle with this spiritual tug of war that happens to us each day, maybe. We're always striving. Remember, we're always striving to move in the direction of obedience to Christ because we are in love with him. How will they know that we are Christians? By our love. And how will they know that we love God? By how we are striving to be obedient to what? His word teaches us. So what does it look like to be walking in the spirit? Your mindset changes. Well, what else does living by the spirit look like? Well, the second thing is, is your desires change. Look in your Bible at verses 7 and 8. 
The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Now, remember, and for some of y'all, it may have been a long time ago, you know. It may have been at a church camp, or it may have been at a revival, or it may have been at a church service. It may have been someone sharing with you as a kid, a, a vacation Bible school teacher, or perhaps someone in college. But remember, when you chose him to be the Lord of your life, it wasn't just for him to be a visitor <laughs> in your life. It was for him to be a resident, right? Well, I mean, it, but maybe not just a resident, maybe the president, right? Well, okay, maybe not the president, but the ruling king. Well, that sounds a little heavy, a little hard. So maybe not the ruling king. How about the loving master of your life? When, when we gave our life to him, we chose him. Uh, we picked him. We, we said we signed up for him being the loving master in our life. And, and here's what goes along with that that he tells us. He's like, here are the instructions. Here's the direction that we're going to move. And the way that he conveys that to us is through his Holy Spirit. By Paul telling us what not living in the Spirit looks like in this verse, he is also showing us what living in the Spirit truly is. Just like my dad did, right? When he said, what do you need to do to lose? Then do the opposite of that. Dad was telling us to discover what it was we needed to do to win. He was showing us what we needed to do to win. In the flesh, look, I get it. We desire what we want when we want it. I mean, that's how I am. I just, I'll tell you that right now. I don't know about you, but uh, when I'm not walking in the Spirit, I see something, I see a person, or I see a possession, or, or whatever it might be, a pleasure, and my first instinct is to say, ooh, I want that. <laughs> not only do I want that, I actually kind of want it right now, right? But God says, Todd, wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Fence that desire in by being obedient to what I want for your life. Now, all of a sudden, it's not what we want. <laughs> it's what he wants because he knows what's best for us. In the flesh, I get it, we desire what we want. We want instant gratification. In the flesh, we desire things like the approval of others more so than the approval of God. If you are a recovering <laughs> people pleaser like me, right, one of the things that you battle against is thinking, you know? And, 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 and the thinking is, is it, it goes like this. Oh, I wonder what they will think about me. Or, man, I, I, you know, I hope, that, I hope that they still like me. Or, man, I hope that they don't think I'm, you know, real crazy. But see, God fences those thoughts in with great questions that work if we are willing to do these three things. Pause, pray, and follow. Questions that he's fencing those thoughts in like, are you more concerned with the approval of others or are you more concerned with the approval of God? It's a pretty good question. Or questions like, oh, what direction are you going to go with Christ? Are you going to drag him over here? Or are you going to follow him over there? Or questions like, what voice are you going to listen to? Feel that fence coming up, right? Or the big question, which voice is more important to you? And when we think through those questions and and we hear those questions, and, and we recognize those questions. Now, all of a sudden, you know, all of that is fenced in by those questions. And if we truly let the Holy Spirit have his way with us and in us and let him work us and let him walk us all the way through those scenarios, then that auditorium of people to please in your mind empties, leaving only an audience of one to please. 
him. But we must let him do his work. And we have to be willing to let him lead our minds all the way through the decision before we act and before we make it. Pause to notice God. Pray to connect with God. (laughs) And follow to obey God. But look, when I'm walking outside of the Spirit, I just react rather than pause. I just react rather than pray. I just react rather than follow. It's like a muscle memory inside of me, man. You know, I forget the new way. I forget the new power available to us. But remember, we are on God's time now. His plan, his way, his mind, his desire, his power. The world wants to rush you away from walking in his spirit. Just like it has always done so many times in the past. But don't let it. Pause. Pray. Follow. Let me give you just a couple of examples of when I walk away from God's spirit. (laughs) Do the opposite of this, okay? I used to fly about 250 days out of the year. (laughs) Several years ago, I was about to board a flight. And right when I walked up to the gate, I could already tell that it was way overbooked. And, you know, all the people that flew a lot all knew it. So when I checked in, I said to uh, the ticket agent, you know, I'd be more than happy to get bumped to a later flight if you need. (laughs) Now, for those of you that fly a lot, you know exactly what I'm up to, don't you? (laughs) You know what I'm going after. I'm going after the free ticket, man. Well, there was this other couple at the counter right beside me, and they were pretty upset because it appeared that only one of them would be able to fly on, leaving the other one in the airport. So they were pleading their case to a different ticket agent. I saw the great opportunity right in front of me then. So I leaned over and I said to their ticket agent, I said, I'll be more than glad to volunteer to get bumped and they can have my seat, right? Well, the woman beside me, I thought, way overreacted. She was just overcome with emotion. And she said, oh, you, right? You are so gracious. You are so kind. You are so gracious. And I'm like, well, you know, I do, I do what I can. <laughs> and uh, she then says to her husband, and then when they get done with the ticket agent, they go and they, they sit down near me in the gate, and, and I can see them starting to tell everyone. And she starts pointing me out, you know, of the crowd, and starts, I can hear her saying, this man graciously has offered to give up his seat. Well, now, I'm feeling pretty awkward right now, right? I mean, because I know what my ulterior motive is, and not only do I know that, I know that at any moment they're about to announce the deal that I just sealed and offer it to other people. Everyone's looking at me and just, just what I thought. A few minutes later, over the loudspeaker, the ticket agent lady, she came on, and she said, Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we are overbooked. One person has already volunteered to take a later flight in exchange for, oh, man, here it comes, a free round-trip ticket anywhere in the continental United States. Please let me know if anyone else would like to take this awesome opportunity. Busted. (laughs) Right there. I can just feel everybody looking at me. I've gone from this really great guy to a guy just really wanting something. And the couple, they looked over at me with this smirk on their face and And I didn't know what to say at all, you know. The truth is, though, when we are walking outside of his spirit, we may look very gracious. We may look very generous. We may look very humble. But we never really are. There is always a selfish freebie that benefits us lurking somewhere in the shadows of that good deed. And have you ever noticed when you're walking outside the Spirit how the ulterior motive needs to be capitalized on and needs to be taken advantage of immediately so you don't miss the opportunity? I mean, in the flesh, we desire what we want when we want it, and we want it right now. In this regard, 
Guys, rushing is a killer for us. Especially if you're learning new ways, if you're learning his ways, and if you're forming new habits, if you're learning his habits. In the flesh, we make choices for our kingdom rather than for his kingdom. You see, God wants us to have big K kingdom perspective rather than little K kingdom perspective. And to do this, we may find ourselves needing to pause and to pray and to follow several times a day. My mother used to do my taxes when I was in my 20s. And I remember one tax season when I received my giving statement from my church in Dallas. And I commented to her, you know, Mom, I wish that I had done better. I wish that I had given more. And oh my gosh, she was just so proud of her son. And she was so amazed by that comment until she figured out <laughs> what I meant. <laughs> I meant it solely <laughs> from a tax deduction standpoint. <laughs> Discovering this then, she acted swiftly and with pinpoint accuracy. And I knew by the look on her face, she had just put me as a 27-year-old man into spiritual timeout. Her first comment in, to, in response to this uh, really wasn't that big a deal, but I should have known better. <laughs> I should have known better than to have reacted or to have argued. She said, 10 years from now, Todd, when the government decides that they will no longer give deductions for charitable giving, how will you respond then? Will you still give? even though it's not going to be any benefit to you and your tax deduction? Well, I should have known not to respond to the way I did, but look, Mom always led with something like that to get me thinking so she could make her bigger point. It was always her second comment, not her first one, which I never saw coming, had no defense of, that would completely lay me out. And so she said this, well... If your desires are just for your life, then you will never be a godly man. <laughs> Chill, Mom. <laughs> Good grief. Ouch. But yeah, that's true. If our desires are just for our kingdom, it will dim our generosity and it will kill our giving in this lifetime that we spend on earth. But if we are living this life with his kingdom in mind, living in his spirit, then our generosity will forever overflow. As the praise band comes up, uh, I just want to uh, tell you guys, I want to remind you of a verse in uh, the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6, 20 and 21. Jesus says this. He said, store up for yourselves treasure in heaven. And then he goes on to say, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And I know Jesus is talking about heaven, but guess what he's talking about in the bigger sense of the word? He is talking about big K kingdom building. Not only there, but also here until it all becomes one every time that we serve others and every time that we pray for others and every time that we fast for others and every time that we share Christ with others we are building there but we are also building here when we live with all of our hope in our kingdom, we desire the things that please our kingdom. But when we live with our hope in God's kingdom, we start to desire different things, things of his kingdom. Look, guys, I know <laughs> it takes time, but the Spirit, his Holy Spirit, 
truly does change our desires. Pause. Pray. Follow. So, Paul tells us, you know, here's what it looks like when you're living by the Spirit. He says, your mindset changes. So, Paul tells us, you know, here's what it looks like when you're living by the Spirit. Your desires change. Where is your mind aiming this morning? What are your desires chasing today? Pause, pray, and follow. I want to show you the scripture one more time. And so, uh, Philippians 4a. And this is the fence, man, right? This is what the litmus test. This is what we compare those thoughts to. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about such things. Pause. Pray. Follow. Lord God, as we come to praise your name, Lord, we ask for a moment of pause right now, God. Right now, Lord. Where is our mind aiming? Are we walking in the Spirit? Or are we outside of the Spirit right now? What desires are we chasing? Are we living in your Spirit, God? Are we living outside of your Spirit right now, Father? Pause us, God. Surround us, fence us in with really good questions that when we answer those, we see you. Father, lead us to prayer, Father, about our minds and about our desires, God. Lord, and let that prayer and that pausing lead us to follow you in obedience, God. Lord, we love you. We want to be in your spirit, God. Amen.
I just want to tell you I'm so happy and glad that all of you came today to join us. Uh, he is the great way maker. Isn't that true? Amen. Guys, pause this week. Pray this week. Follow this week. Remember to reach out to those around you this week. Contact those. Use that church directory. Give them a call. If you need prayer, Email us or call our office. If you're in the Lubbock area and you need us to run an errand for you, you need us to go and get uh, medicine for you or to the store for you, then our care team is just waiting. They cannot wait to help you. So call Jeannie or send us an email, and we would love to do that. I cannot wait until we are back together again. I love you very much. We love you very much. But guess what? God loves you way more. So may you have a blessed and great week of walking in his spirit this week. God bless you all.